Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to today's video where I'm going to be sharing with you a few tips and techniques on drawing this lemon crusted cockatoo. So this was a very interesting drawing, there's lots of white feathers, there's that little glint of yellow as well. And I started off with this one by drawing the eye. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this because I have a load of videos and an in-depth kind of workshop type thing on bird eyes which I'm going to leave a link to in the description below. I'm going to start this by saying that if you do want to follow along with this in real time then there is a four and a half hour tutorial available on Patreon and my website so if you're interested in learning in depth about white feathers and all of that kind of stuff then follow the link to there. But anyway yeah I just started off this eye with some dark sepia, a little bit of blue, I've got some indenthrine blue in there, some light ultramarine and sky blue through the highlight but a majority of the eye is just pretty much dark like you get with a lot of bird eyes, they're literally just kind of black specks and then there's like a very slight hint of colour, in this case it was just the hint of colour in the highlight. So I've also used a little bit of the Holbein Soft White to add a little bit of that white glint into there as well but the main kind of feature of this eye was the, the greeny blue wrinkles that were set around it. So I've started off that just by going in with a light base colour. I've used a warm grey one and then I've just used some light blue shades, so some sky blue, some light ultramarine and also some earth green for a little bit more of the greenier side on the underneath and then I've used some darker blues to add in those details so um, identifying all those wrinkles and getting all of those in with a nice sharp dark indigo pencil. Then we go straight into the feathers so as I said there's a lot of white feathers on this cockatoo and these may look a little bit daunting but they're not if you take some really simple steps so the first thing that I'm doing with the feathers here I'm working onto the right hand side of the eye around the beak where we've got some darker feathers as you can see I'm kind of putting down some really dark unusual colors rather than just coming in with whites and grays so I'm actually adding in some burnt carmine some yellow some green some blue and adding all of those into the shadows so instead of building up the shadows of the white feathers with just grays I'm going in with all of those colours and as you can see it builds a really interesting looking shadow and it actually works incredibly well especially when you have some really really light white feathers which you can see are going on kind of on the upper right hand side of the eye and then you've got those darker ones around the beak so I've mainly added in just layers of red green, blue, a little bit of yellow and hardly any grey or brown. I don't want to muddy the feathers or anything, adding in too much brown and stuff can kind of give that kind of muddy effect so we're staying away from that. Then I moved on to the beak and this was just made up with again layers of blue, a little bit of grey and I actually used a blender pen to help to smooth everything out and I used a finesse blender pen for this, uh, it's one of my favourite ones to use and added in those initial layers, blended out and then I'm able to get a really nice smooth surface and then I can go in with some of those details, we can add all of those cracks in the beak, add in like that kind of like nail effect, like all those ridges and everything and just making sure I've got a super sharp pencil for that, using a white pencil as well to add in a few highlights and accents. Using a white pencil on top of something, an area where it's been blended with a solvent is actually really easy so it should be easy to add the whiter highlights if you follow that step and use a solvent for that particular method. You can also use solvent for the entirety, entirety of this tutorial but I find that white colours tend to not really need a lot of blending because they're so light and there's not too many layers. When you are adding blender down and there's not that many layers you can kind of give a weird effect to your paper so when you're blending with a solvent you need to make sure there's a lot of layers down which you don't always get um, time to add when you're working with lighter feathers or lighter colours like this. So for the kind of yellow areas of the feathers I'm mainly going in with some really bright yellow colours so I'm using some cadmium yellow lemon and a slightly darker yellow as well and in those yellow areas I'm also adding in some red to tie in with the other areas you'll also see that I add in the red down further down the bird as well which just helps to bring it all together and to help the feathers look super white, I'm actually going in and adding in some of the sky blue. So I find personally that when you add blue into white areas, it makes them look even brighter white. And that's what I'm doing here, just adding in that blue into those really, really light areas 
and then it helps to also make your shadows look a little bit dark as well. So for the shadows in the yellow area I'm kind of using some green gold, some Bista, um, some of those more neutral tones and then where you've got super bright yellow things you can see I'm working on the really bright feathers at the, the crest of the cockatoo here and I'm using those really bright yellows. I use the cadmium yellow lemon as a base, a little bit of ivory because it's that warmer toned kind of yellowy hue but mainly just going in and adding the yellows uh, the light cadmium yellow lemon whatever it's called as a base and then blending with a little bit of white if I need to get it a little bit lighter the shadows under there and just going in with a little bit of green as well along with that green gold and that bista but yeah the main sort of subject of this tutorial that I want to talk to you about was just those white feathers and getting the appearance of it looking super white but without just using greys and leaving the paper white because a lot of my students ask me like oh how do you get white textures because surely it's just white but it really isn't just white of the paper or adding in a few greys if you have white areas that you just shade with a lot of greys it can look very dull and flat which is why at least I like to add in a little bit of blue because as I said that blue really helps to make the really bright areas super bright in comparison to your shadows so I always like to add in at least a blue but a lot of other colours as well as you can see when we start to get a little bit more complete on the cockatoo here you'll see how it really uh, works with everything. Uh, but putting down that base of the warm grey one I also use a cold grey one in a few areas as well where we have a few sort of more cooler tones which is where I tend to use a little bit more of like a purpley tone to the shadows, use a little bit more of that um, blue mixed with a little bit of burnt carmine kind of creates a really nice purple tone which I found throughout this which was really nice. In a few of the shadows and sort of identifying the form of the feathers, that kind of scallop shape as it curves around the neck and in the more kind of darker sort of shadowed areas of the feathers, I'm actually going in and using a warm grey 3 or a warm grey 2 which is slightly darker than the initial base layer and that just helps to identify the shape that the feathers are making and how they're kind of sitting in relation to one another before kind of committing with any other colour. It's just a really light base or light kind of area still but it's just a little bit darker than the initial base so you can just map out everything that needs to be mapped out you can see that's what's going on here with these feathers around the beak where there's a little bit more of like that darker shadow and I've actually used the warm grey 3 or warm grey 2 and then I've gone in with some Bista and then really developed those shadows with some of the burnt carmine, gone in with some more green, a little bit of yellow, green gold seems to be my favourite colour here because you've got those yellow tones in the cockatoo as well. So I'm just mixing all of those colours together into the shadows, as you can see it creates a really nice shadowy effect. I did say that I'm trying to stay away from a little bit more of the neutral kind of brown tones for the shadows and I did actually add in some neutral brown tones in this little section here and I instantly regretted it because it ended up looking really muddy and I did actually have to go through and erase a little bit here so I always tell people to work in light layers and this is why because when you work in light layers it's much easier to erase any mistakes that you may make uh, than it is to go in like if you've used a heavy pressure it's really difficult to lift that colour and um, to kind of get the tooth of the paper back to where it was because you've kind of gone in with a hard pressure you've diminished all of that so if you use light layers you are kind of preserving the tooth of the paper so you can ultimately add more layers over the top but also when it comes to erasing if you need to it's a lot easier to do so because they'll just lift right up so I don't know if I show it in the tutorial here at all about me erasing but I also make a mistake towards the end as well where I have to erase some more out but yeah I made a mistake of adding too many browns and you can see that that patch looks really muddy and I'm really not happy with it but I carried on with the shoulder and as you can see I'm kind of using the uh, base layer method, putting down that warm grey one, then going in and identifying some of the shadows so I can get the form of each feather and then going through and fleshing it out, adding in uh, some shading and making everything sort of flow together. There's a lot more blue tones in this shoulder and I was a lot more comfortable adding in those blue tones in here because... I don't know, I just love to add blue into white subjects, it's just one of my favourite things to do and you see I can kind of, um, I'm mixing in some greens and some, some reds 
to create a little bit more of a shadow so adding that burnt carmine on top of the blue creates a little bit more of a purple tone which is perfect in the more kind of cooler shadowed areas and then because the earth green is a little bit more of like a warmer toned green it kind of works really well with the yellows I add it into more of like the warmer toned areas so jumping back into um, this bit now uh, you can see maybe there's a slight difference in that little muddy patch I have actually erased it. I didn't film it, unfortunately, um, but I did erase it and then I've just gone in with a few more of those more uh, kind of green golds and I've added in some burnt carmine, just really nice light layers of that through there and it's made a whole load of difference to that. So you can really tell that just by adding in a little bit of brown can just really change the effect and just mixing all of those colors together just wasn't a great effect so where you can try and stick to a little bit more of uh, like blending similar colors together and kind of staying away from more brown tones to add shadows it's okay in like certain subjects where you do have a little bit more of like a natural kind of brown tone to something like maybe you're drawing a lion in which case a walnut brown would make sense in a kind of darker shadowy area but in this case because there was a lot of bright yellows it didn't really make sense to add in a lot of that dark brown it made sense to just add in slightly darker yellows and to mix those yellows with some reds to create a really kind of dark orangey color for the shadows rather than this kind of dull looking brown <laughs> you will can see here in this little section that i've added on the right as well this has done the same. I wasn't concentrating enough at this point and I've actually kind of created this really disgusting muddy colour. You can see it's just getting worse the more I'm adding to it and I actually did go through and erase that bit the same as well. But ultimately what you want to remember for feathers here is to put a base layer down, then identify with a slightly darker base kind of tone uh, your form of the feathers, any shadows that you want to add in and then you can go in and start to add in the shadow colours and then you want to come back through and blend all of that out so you get a really nice smooth area. As I said, you can use a solvent for creating feathers like this, especially in the shadow areas you can like blend and create a really nice kind of um, smoothly blended area with a solvent but it's not entirely necessary because in your very very lighter areas you're not going to have that much colour down and your solvent blender may actually kind of make a weird effect on your paper if you are using a solvent so just be wary if that's what you're doing in your lighter tones. You can also uh, apply that kind of tip to like fur if you're doing light coloured fur sometimes when you use a solvent if that's your way of working you're going to need a lot of layers down and sometimes you don't need those layers down. But yeah just kind of finishing this guy off just adding in some more shadows and finishing off those feathers and uh, this one was quite a challenge for me not gonna lie but I like the end result here and again if you want to follow along in real time and see these struggles and everything make sure you follow over on patreon or on my website and I will see you guys in the next tutorial bye